What up everybody, Instruct the Beats back again here today with a volume lesson. Today we are going to be talking about finding the volume of triangular pyramids, or in other words, tetrahedrons. All right, so let's break it down and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the volume of a triangular pyramid by using its relationship to a triangular prism. All right, so we're not gonna be giving you the official formula for a triangular pyramid today. We're gonna be talking about how can you solve that question using your knowledge of pyramids and prisms. So let's dive into our math vocabulary. So our math vocabulary today is a pyramid. If you were with us for our square and rectangular pyramid volume lesson, you've already got this, but a, a pyramid is a 3D object where the base is a polygon and the sides are triangles that meet at an apex, right? And today we're looking at a very special type of pyramid, a tetrahedron, which is just a fun name for a triangular pyramid. So today we're gonna be talking about finding the volume of a pyramid when the base is a triangle. In math terms, we call that a tetrahedron. So let's take a look at the parts of our tetrahedron, or in other words, a triangular pyramid, right? Both of those are interchangeable. So here, just like we had for our square and rectangular pyramids, we have our apex, right? This is where the sides or the faces that are triangles are going to meet, right? That's called the apex. We're gonna have a base of our pyramid or tetrahedron, right? And that's gonna be a triangle today, just like I said. And then we're obviously gonna have a height, right? Our height is going to be perpendicular to the base. It's gonna run from the apex all the way down. And that should not be confused with the slant height, all right? Our slant height is going to start the apex and be on a slant all the way down the face of our pyramid, right? And is going to be different than our height. Matter of fact, the relationship between a height and a slant height the slant height will always be a bigger number than the height, and that just goes back to a relationship between right triangles we don't need to get into today. But these are the parts of our tetrahedron, aka the triangular pyramid. So here's our key thought for today, right? And again, this is very similar to our last uh, square and rectangular pyramid lesson, but when a prism and a pyramid, right? So here we have a triangular prism, here we have a triangular pyramid or tetrahedron, have the same base and height, not slant height, but height, the pyramid is going to be one third of the prism, okay? So when the base is exactly the same and the height is exactly the same, the relationship between these is the pyramid is going to be one third the volume of this prism. Kind of hard to prove to you on a video, but a lot of times in real life, right, we like to fill up uh, water into a prism and a pyramid that have the same height and base, and you can actually take three of those pyramids and dump them into the prism, and that kind of proves our point, but you're going to have to trust me on this. This is our key thought that our entire lesson is built on. So in other words, just like our square and rectangular pyramids, this is all going to come back to the volume formula, the volume formula, right? Everything we are talking about in these lessons go back to this, the volume formula for a right prism. Here we have that volume formula, right? And we know from previous videos, this is gonna be the volume formula. And when you're finding the volume formula of a right prism, whether that is a triangular prism, a square prism, um, a rectangular prism, a trapezoidal prism, we need to find the area of that base first. So for a triangular prism, that would be one half base times height, right? That's gonna be the area of a triangle formula. And then we'd be multiplying that times the height. That's what we went over in our right prism volume lesson. But a triangular pyramid is one third of a triangular prism. So if we can find the volume of a triangular prism, then it should be easy to find the volume of a triangular pyramid or tetrahedron. What we're gonna do is find that volume and then take one third of that. Or another thing we could do is we could rewrite the volume formula for a triangular prism and then divide by three. Now I wanna pause right here, okay? This is the area of the base, okay? And this is the base of the prism or pyramid, right? That's why I have A subscript B. That means area of the base. This B and H 
are going to be two sides of that triangle that make up the base, right? But we call it base and height. So I didn't want you guys to get confused on that. All right, I know that's kind of wordy, so let's go ahead and write down some steps and then we can get into some examples. So here is our tetrahedron or triangular prism that we're trying to find the volume of. And to help us understand what we're doing, we're going to use our imagination to imagine a triangular prism around it. So to find the volume of the pyramid, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find the area of the base. So remember the base of a triangular prism or a triangular pyramid, right, is going to be a triangle. So we need to know, hey, what is the base, okay, and the height of this triangle? So we're gonna use those two numbers to help us find the area of the base. So our next step, once you find the area of that base, would be to find the height of the prism. And remember the height, if you go remember all the way back to our original volume lesson, right, is how many layers are you going to stack on top of each other, right? When we first learned about volume, we learned about cubic units and we used uh, manipulatives and shapes to help us build figures, right? So the height is how many layers, right? How tall is our triangular prism. Remember that height is going to be the same height as our pyramid. Once we know both of those numbers, we're going to use our formula volume equals area of the base times the height to help us find the volume of our imaginary triangular prism. Then step number four, we know that a pyramid is one third of a prism, right? So we're going to take that volume of the imaginary triangular prism and we're going to take one third of it and that will tell us the volume of our pyramid. So we're not gonna be memorizing a uh, volume formula for a tetrahedron today. What we're gonna be doing is using our knowledge of triangular prisms to help us understand how to find the volume of this tetrahedron, AKA the triangular pyramid. Let's take a look at a we do problem so we can check this out in action. All right, so here's our we do problem, right? It says Gru and his minions want to fill this tetrahedron up completely with water, how many cubic inches of water would they need? Well, we know if it's asking us for cubic inches of water, that's asking us for volume. So our statement to this question would say, they need blank cubic inches of water. So I know that I'm looking for the volume of this tetrahedron. Well, to help me understand what I'm doing, just like our step said, we want to imagine a triangular prism around this, okay? And then we're gonna use those steps to help us figure out what the volume is. So step number one is we need to figure out, hey, what is the area of this base right here, right? It's already in yellow, but let me go ahead and make it green right here. And we're gonna use, because this is a right triangle down here, all right, the base and the height of this bottom triangle, right? And so our area of our base is going to be one half times 12 times eight. Okay, I'll go ahead and put that in parentheses right there. That's where the area of the base is gonna come from. The next thing we wanna know is, hey, what's the height of my triangular prism? Remember, we're not gonna use our slant height right here, okay? Because that's not a true representation of how tall it is from the apex straight down to the floor. We're gonna be using our perpendicular height, which I see right here is 16. So I need 16 layers, right? of the area of this base. So I'm gonna multiply that by 16, all right? And that would be the volume of this right triangular prism. But remember, we're just using this as kind of an imaginary thing to help us understand. Let's go ahead and get rid of that prism now. And if we're left over with our pyramid, this formula right here would give us the volume of the prism. We want the volume of a pyramid, so we need to take this and divide it by three or you could multiply it by one third, right? It's reciprocal, you're gonna get the same thing. So this is how we can find the volume of our tetrahedron. So if we go ahead and put this into our calculator, 256 inches cubed, right? Volume's all about cubic units. And so if Gru and his minions wanna fill it up, they would need 256 inches cubed of water. So again, today we're not gonna be memorizing a volume formula. We're gonna be taking our knowledge of right prisms and pyramids and using that to help us conceptually understand how to find the volume of this tetrahedron, all right? So let's go ahead and try our U-Try problem. All right, so let's take that and apply this to our U-Try problem. The question says, what is the volume of a triangular pyramid that has a base with an area of 45 square inches 
and a height of eight inches. So if you're ready, go ahead and pause this video. You can try do solving it by yourself and then push play. So if you're ready, go ahead and push pause and then push play when you're ready to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it and at least attempted the problem, all right? So the question says, what is the volume of a triangular pyramid? So I know I'm talking about area of the base times the height. And I know that this is a triangular pyramid or tetrahedron, okay? And so my base is gonna be one half base times height. Again, that's talking about just the two sides of the triangle that is, makes up the base of our pyramid. And I'll be multiplying that by the height of the whole pyramid. And then I'm going to be dividing that by three or multiplying it by one third, okay? This is what we just talked about. So here, I made this really easy because I actually gave you the area of the base. The area of the base was 45 square inches. And then the height of that pyramid was eight, right? So if I go ahead and plug this in, if I'm trying to find the volume, I don't even need base times height because I already have the area of the base. So that's just gonna be 45. And then my height was eight, so I need to multiply that by eight. And then I'm going to divide everything by three or multiply times one third. And if you do that math correctly, you're going to get a volume of 120 cubic inches, okay? But if you didn't get it right, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Go back, rewatch the video, see where your mistake was and try to get better. Thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. We'd love for you to check out instructedbeats.com for all our videos and merchandise. We'd love for you to subscribe, like this video, comment, let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instruct the Beats, out.